The Weird Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the Weird Circle. again the immortal tale, Jane Eyre. Dear Diary, March 1st, 1864. I left my aunt's house early this morning and arrived at Thornfield Manor at five o'clock this afternoon. The house was dark and gloomy, and the winding path that leads to the house is shadowed by old trees. I like old trees usually, but these trees are gnarled and bent, like gnarled, bent old men. And the limbs which reached out over the path reminded me of long, bony fingers which were reaching out trying to choke me. My throat was dry and parched, and I experienced a new kind of fear as I walked up the path to the steps of the house. This is my first job of any kind. I've been hired as a governess of ten-year-old Adela Rochester. Adela and her father, Edward Rochester, a widower, live alone at Thornfield with two servants. I walked up the stone steps and then nervously pulled the doorbell and waited, my valise in my right hand. The heavy door swung slowly open. Oh. Are you Jane Eyre? Why, yes. Yes, I am. Mr. Rochester told me to expect you. Won't you come in? Thank you. I'll show you to your rooms. I'm Mrs. Campbell, Mr. Rochester's housekeeper. How do you do, Mrs. Campbell? I'm so glad to meet you. Are you? Follow me up these stairs, please. Of course, Mrs. Campbell. Mr. Rochester left word with me to see that you were made comfortable. At least as comfortable as anybody can be at Thornfield. I'm sure I'll manage very nicely. Will you? <laughs> That's what you think now, Miss Eyre. But wait. Wait till you've been here a while. We've had many governesses before you, but they never stay. No. Never. Well, why not? Why not? You'll see. This is your room, right at the head of the stairs. Make yourself at home, my dear. Oh, and one thing. Dinner is served at six. Never later. Please be prompt. Dear Diary, September 1st, 1864. This is my sixth month in service. Looking back, I have no regrets. I spent many evenings talking to Edward Rochester. Unforgettably pleasant evenings. Happy evenings listening to the soft, pleasant murmur of his voice but there's a shadow of some strange, remote misery that seemed to cling to the house. A shadow of something that I can't fathom. I never ask. I don't dare intrude my curiosity, idle curiosity, into a family secret. However, strange events took place this evening when Adela, my student, and I were sitting in the living room alone. There was a warm fire burning in the fireplace, and though it was well past Adela's usual study period... We were reviewing her geography. I think I remember the English seaboard towns. Well, just the eastern coast, dear. Now, you start with Tinmouth. Tinmouth, uh, South Shields, Sunderland, hmm. West Hartpool, Scarborough, um, uh... Yarmouth? Uh, Yarmouth, 
I never can remember Yarmouth. Oh, Adela, shame on you. Now, think of all the people who live in Yarmouth whose feelings would be hurt. Would they? Well, they most certainly would. Just because I forgot, huh? <laughs> Yarmouth. Yarmouth, Lostoff, Biswitch, Harwich, and Margaret. How's that, Miss Sayers? That's brilliantly executed, young lady. Thanks. You're a very apt pupil. That's just about all I am. Mrs. Campbell says I'm a naughty, wicked, sinful child of the devil. Adela, when did she say all this to you? Yesterday. I was... Well, I was on the third floor. Well, you had no right to be on the third floor. Your father's given strict orders that no one is to go up there. No one but Mrs. Campbell. I don't see why children are shut out of things grown-ups know about. What's in the attic that's so special anyway? I don't know, Adela. Daddy knows. Mrs. Campbell told me Daddy knows. Well, perhaps Mrs. Campbell says many things she doesn't mean. Do I indeed, Miss Ayers? Do I indeed? I didn't know you'd taken to interpreting my mind as well as the child's mind. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sure I didn't mean any harm, Mrs. Campbell. Hmm. I'm sure you didn't. Time to go to bed, Adela. Nine o'clock. I don't want to go to bed yet. Now, yes, you do, young lady. You want to go to bed because I do. I'm sleepy. Oh! <sighs> oh I'm sleepy, too. <laughs> All right, off we go. Oh, Miss Ayer. Yes, Mrs. Campbell. Mr. Rochester asked me to tell you to drop into the study for a few seconds before you retire. He wants to see you. What about? I'm not in the habit of prying into Mr. Rochester's private affairs, Miss Ayer. Come along, Adela. Off to bed. Good night, Miss Sayer. Good night, dear. Pleasant dreams. I'll be up shortly and look in on you. Miss Sayer. We've been sitting here talking for well over an hour, Mr. Rochester. Just chattering aimlessly. I don't find you chattering, Miss Jane. You don't mind if I call you Jane? No, not at all. I find it stimulating. I've learned a lot about you, too. Born an orphan, brought up by a stupid maiden aunt... You love children? I never and... said my aunt was stupid, Mr. Rochester. Please call me Edward, Jane. Edward? No, as a matter of fact, you didn't. But I gathered as much. Let's see what else I found out. Well, you're a particularly nice person, and I love you very much. You... Did you say... Yes, I said I loved you. I love you, Jane. Edward, I... Does I... that frighten you? Yes. Yes, it does, in a way. Why? Well, there's so much about you and the house that I don't understand. I... Trust me and try to believe in me. Edward. What's bothering you, Jane? Well, it's Adela. She's so frightened. She's frightened of the mystery in this house. There's no mystery in this house. Well, then why is the attic shut off that way? It saves fuel. Well, that's nonsense. The attic's heated. Let's say it saves fuel and let it go with that. Edward... Last night, I was awakened in the middle of the night by shuffling footsteps over my head, like the footsteps of a lame animal. I lay in bed trembling for hours until the footsteps subsided. You had a nightmare, probably, Jane. Well, that wasn't the first time I heard those footsteps. Probably Mrs. Campbell rummaging up there. She has insomnia at times. Mrs. Campbell doesn't walk on all fours, Edward. Well, probably, uh, probably the wind. Adela heard it, too. Let's say it's the wind and forget it, shall we? Sorry. I shouldn't have started to talk about it, but you asked me to trust you. And you can't? Well, you make it a little difficult, don't you? Jane. Jane, I... Yes, I guess I do. Where are you going? To bed early. I... I'm frightfully tired. No matter what happens, Jane, believe this one thing. I do love you. I love you more than I ever believed I could love anyone. Good night and sleep well. Oh, oh I'm so sleepy. I'm so very sleepy. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if he meant what he said. Now, why would he say he loved me if he... What's the secret in this house? What's that? Oh, I wonder if it'll start again. Oh, no, it probably was the wind. My imagination runs wild at night. No. 
No, no wind ever moaned like that. Not even a leaf on the tree outside my window stirs. Now, how could I even think it's the wind? Oh, Edward. Edward, what are you keeping from me? Oh, there it is again. Just listen to it walking up and down, scratching the floor. What? An animal of some kind, a caged beast. Just listen to it. Oh, what could that be? That's not the wind, it's not my imagination. I'm awake, and yet I... No. No, that thing's got to stop. It's got to stop. No. Miss Ayer. Miss Ayer. Yes, yes, Adela, wait till I open the door. Adela. Listen to that. I'm scared. I'm scared. Of course you are, Adela, child. Of course you are. We hear it every night. What is it up there, Miss Ayer? What makes that awful sound? What is it? I don't know, Adela. Poor child. Nothing at all, darling. Now you see, it's stopped now. I'm scared. I'm awful scared. Well, it's all over now, darling. Now come along. I'll take you back to bed. But you what it was up there. I'd tell my daddy and he'd make it stop. I wouldn't. I'll come to you back to bed. Wouldn't he make it stop, Miss Hill? Wouldn't he? I'm so scared. So scared. Now hop into bed again, darling. And I'll stay right here next to you until you fall asleep. Never used to be like that. Never. No. When did this start, Adela? Just in the last year or so. Of course, I was never allowed in the attic. Never. I shouldn't say never because I don't remember everything. Never. I'm sleepy. <laughs> then you go back to sleep, Adela. You sleep, darling. I'll pull the covers way up over you. Like this. Mm. There, darling. Now you're safe, little Adela. You're quite safe. Now go to sleep. To sleep. I want. Oh, I hope that same scratching doesn't start again. If I went up into the attic, I could find out what it is. Nobody would even have to know that I was up in the attic. Nobody. The attic's there at the back of the hallway, I think. Somewhere back here. This door. Yes, they must be behind this door. I see Mrs. Campbell come this way out. Just try this door. Yes. This is it. Quite a long flight of stairs. Oh, there it is again. Well, I'll just walk up these stairs and look around. I'll just walk up and perhaps peek in the keyhole. I, I shouldn't really, but for the child's sake, for all our sakes. What are you doing here, Jean? What are you doing here? Edward. Answer me. What are you doing on these stairs? <laughs> well, I'd be glad to answer you, Edward, if you'd just tell me what that ungodly noise is. Don't look at me like that. Please don't look at me like that. I... Edward, I just can't stand it here any longer. I can't stand it here any longer. I tell you, I can't stand it. I can't, Edward. I can't. Stop sobbing. Someday I'll explain everything to you. Honestly, I will. Come along to the study now. I'll light a fire in the fireplace and have Mrs. Campbell bring us some hot tea. You're so thoughtful, Edward. You're so thoughtful. And be careful walking down the stairs. Please forgive me. Forgive you? For what? What I've done. Being so disloyal. Any woman would have done exactly what you've done. If only... If only what? If only I could tell you everything, Jane. Why can't you trust me, Edward? I can't trust anybody. Mrs. Campbell knows. Yes, Mrs. Campbell is the only one in the world who knows, Jane. Please, darling, trust me. Did your first wife know? No. No, she died without knowing. Oh, darling. Edward, is this secret the reason why Mrs. Campbell hates me so very much? She doesn't hate you, not really. 
She's worried about me, that's all. Here's the study. Come in and sit down. Oh, Edward, I'm tired. I'm so very tired. You mean tonight, dear? No. Tired of always having been alone. I wonder where Mrs. Campbell keeps the tapers for the fireplace. In the vase in the corner. I see. I'll light the fire, Jane. Don't get up. Jane. Yes, Edward. Being alone is... Well, it's not good for people, really. When two people are in love, the way we're in love... Yes, Edward? Well, if the obstacles which prevent their getting married can be ignored, if, if they trust each other, I mean really trust each other. Edward, what are you trying to say to me? That I... I love you, Jane. Oh. Can you... Well, could you possibly believe in me enough to... to be my wife? Your wife? Please, darling. But, Edward, I... Trust me. I've been fighting loving you ever since I arrived here, and I'm tired of fighting it. Edward, I'm tired of fighting something that's stronger than I am. You will, then? Yes, Edward Rochester. I'll be your wife. You rang for me, Mr. Rochester. Yes, Mrs. Campbell, I rang for you. Would you bring me a decanter of wine and three glasses? Three glasses, sir. Yes, Mrs. Campbell. I thought perhaps you'd be the first to congratulate the bride and bridegroom-to-be. Yes. Yes, I'd like to be the first. Congratulations, sir, and a long and happy married life. Come in. Good morning, Miss Eyre. Oh. Do you mind if I come in for a while? No, please do. I was just brushing my hair, Miss Campbell. Do you seriously intend to go through with this marriage, Miss Eyre? Why, yes, Mrs. Campbell. Oh, you fool, you idiot. Really, Mrs. Campbell. Take my advice and pack your clothes as fast as you can pack them and leave this house. Well, I don't understand. Naturally, you don't understand. There are a lot of things you don't understand, Miss Eyre. I know there are. But I trust Mr. Rochester. Do you? Do you indeed? Yes, I do. And I don't like your attitude toward me at all. You don't? You don't like my attitude, eh? You've no idea what you're getting into. I came into this room with only one idea, one idea to warn you. And you, like a silly, sniveling schoolgirl instead of a grown woman, you don't like my attitude. Mrs. Campbell, if you admit that I'm a grown woman, then perhaps I'm old enough to make up my own mind. Perhaps you are. Frankly, I don't care what happens to you. A pretty face like yours has no meaning for me, even if it has trapped Edward Rochester. Trapped him? Yes, trapped him. But I do care what happens to him. And I warn you right now, I'll do everything within my power to see that your marriage does not go through. There's nothing that you can do, Mrs. Campbell. Nothing. Isn't there? Well, a certain Mr. Mason could do a lot. You won't be married for four days. And I can do a lot in four days. September 5th, 1864. Tears. My tears splotched the page as I write to you, dear diary. Today was my wedding day. Guests arrived as planned at five o'clock this afternoon. It's brilliant. Such a lovely the minister waited at a hastily built altar in the parlor as Edward and I walked hand in hand toward him. Then the wedding ceremony started. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God, signifying unto us the Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Wait a minute. I'll speak. I'll speak, although it should be obvious to others in this room that a marriage between Edward Rochester and anybody is completely illegal. Mason. Yes, it's me, Edward. How did you know? How did I know you were intending to get married? Ask your housekeeper. Mrs. Campbell? Yes, Mr. Rochester. I wrote a letter to Mr. Mason and had him come to Thornfield at once. And so I came. 
Just in time to watch this pretty little farce be enacted. Edward, what's he talking about? Yes, what's this all about? Why don't you tell them, Edward? Tell them the truth. I... I... What is it, Edward? I can't tell them, but I'll show them. I'll show everybody what you did to me, Mason. Come along, everyone. Where are you going, Edward? To the attic, Jane. Come along, all of you. Oh. And I'll show you what he's talking about. I'll show you why Mason can speak now and speak fairly. I'll show you what he means. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the famous secret attic of my home. Follow me right here to the left. Oh, no. Listen to that, everyone. Listen. Do you know what that is? Wait till I open the door and you can see for yourselves. You'll see a woman running around a room like a caged animal, limping on all fours like a beast, with hair on her face and her arms, hair like a... You'll see, all of you. You'll see. Oh, no. Well, Bertha, how are you today? I, 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 like, I like dress. I like to see oh, death. May I, may I introduce my wife to you? Edward. This is my wife, Bertha Mason. My wife and his daughter. Mason's daughter. I was forced to marry her when I was a youngster. I never met this woman before I stood in front of the altar with her. You were given a good dowry at the time. Oh, yes. Yes, you provided an excellent dowry. And then... Then when I drew my bride's veil off of her face, I saw this face, the face of a congenital idiot. But there was nothing I could do by the laws of the state and the church. You can't divorce an insane, a hopelessly insane woman. Edward, Edward, what of Adela? Adela's not my child, she's adopted. I need some interest in life. I needed someone to care for. And I thought Adela would be the answer to my loneliness. Until I met you, Jane. Oh, until I met you. My darling, what can I say to you? That you hate me and, and I don't blame no. you. You should hate you, Edward. No. And I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. And so, diary, so it was that I discovered the secret of the attic. The secret of the tragedy which clung to Thornfield. The guests left the house hurriedly. I went to my room and packed my clothes. Then I walked slowly downstairs without saying goodbye to anyone, not even to Adela. I was confused and alone. At the foot of the stairs, Mrs. Campbell stopped me. Miss Ayer, are you leaving? Yes, Mrs. Campbell. Please say goodbye to everybody for me. I had to do what I did, Miss Ayer, for his sake and for yours. Yes, I understand. Please don't say any more. Yes, Miss Ayer. Take good care of Mrs. Campbell. I will, my dear. I will. Very good care of him. Goodbye and good luck. She said goodbye. For quite a while, I stood outside the door trying to collect myself. Then I started to walk down the road, alone. Suddenly, I turned around and gazed back at Thornfield. The entire house was on fire. I dropped my suitcase and I ran back as quickly as I could. Mrs. Campbell and Adela were standing outside the house. Mrs. Campbell called out to me. Jane Eyre! Jane Eyre! Yes, Mrs. Campbell! He's trapped up there! Look up the roof! Edward! Edward, darling! Oh, Mrs. Campbell, we've got to help her. We've got to. I told him not to go up and help her. That fool of a woman set fire to the place. Bertha Mason! She's like a child with matches. She's on the roof with you. He went up to rescue her. Edward! Edward! Nobody will set me up. Mason slipped as she reached the edge of the roof and went hurtling over the edge into the flames below. As for Edward, somehow he managed to survive the fire and slipped to safety. We took him to the hospital for immediate treatment. 
Now, as I sit by his bedside, writing to you, dear diary, and gazing at the beloved features I know so well, I conclude the diary of Jane Eyre. Wait, I must. Perhaps for many months. But wait, I will. To become the wife of the man I love. September 5th, 1864. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the tale, Jane Eyre. Bellkeeper, hold the bells.